Uh, hi everyone, my name is Tomáš Hoza. I work at Red Hat as a software engineer in developers experience team. I maintain most of DNS-related uh, demons in Fedora NRL, and I'm working on <coughs> the DNSSEC uh, part on workstations. Uh, um, here my colleague, Petr Špaček from identity management team uh, will cover the uh, second part of presentation regarding uh, server side of DNSSEC implementation. So uh, what we will talk about today. Uh, first of all, I'll explain how DNSSEC works uh, really briefly and uh, uh, what's the difference between DNSSEC and plain DNS protocol, why it's so important, why we are trying to like, uh, make it work on client side, but not only. Uh, and then I'll explain uh, uh, what's the architecture and uh, what we are using on client side, what's the current situation in Fedora uh, 20 and later, uh, and uh, what is the possible future uh, we see. And after that, uh, Peter will uh, cover the server side and talk about free IPA integration. So what's DNSSEC? I hope every one of you know what DNS stands for. It's a domain name system, and it's a basically a distributed database can, that can be used for storing any type of uh, data, not only IP addresses, but also some uh, keys and IPsec keys or uh, text records or something like that. Uh, plain DNS uh, doesn't use any like security mechanisms, so it's vulnerable, vulnerable uh, and suffers from a uh, few kinds of attacks, for example, uh, cache poisoning. And the uh, really important thing is that uh, with uh, plain DNS, you cannot be never, you, you never can be sure that the response you get uh, was uh, the response that originated from the server you were asking and that no one tampered with, with it along the way. So what's DNSSEC? DNSSEC is only extension of uh, existing uh, DNS protocol. So servers that don't talk DNSSEC will just ignore those options. And uh, servers that talk DNSSEC or have it, ha that have them have it implemented, uh, they will like, use those information to do the validation. DNSSEC uh, uses asymmetric cryptography for signing uh, data uh, that you get from a DNS server. So you can be sure or you can make sure that uh, the response uh, is really the one that uh, originated from the remote server and that no one tampered with it. So you can get uh, like uh, data from DNS and you can trust them. So briefly, how it works. DNSSEC uh, uses a chain of trust built from the uh, top root servers to the bottom uh, to do the validation. So only thing you need to know to be able to validate some data is uh, the root key, the key that is installed on every client, every server, and using this key you can validate responses from uh, root servers. So the process is like this. Uh, first you will ask uh, to resolve some name, the root server. It will, it will uh, tell you what's the IP address of the uh, uh, name server responsible for subdomain, the delegated name server, and it will tell you the what, like uh, what key the delegated server uses, and it will sign the data with the well-known root key. So you will get this information, you can validate it, and after that uh, you can you will ask the .com name server. Uh, it will tell you like uh, what server is responsible for example.com domain and it will tell you like what key it uses and it will uh, sign it with its own key. Uh, you will get the response, you will validate it using this key and you can validate uh, that it's really the key it should be using because you already got the information from root server before so you can validate this too and etc. You will ask uh, finally the example.com name server, it will tell you the IP address of, of www host and um, it will sign the response using its key and you can validate it's really the key it should be using. So why it's so important? Why we are, like, why we are so interested in using DNSSEC? First of all, uh, 
it provides you a way to get uh, uh, securely data from DNS server, and you can trust such data. So it's uh, beneficial for storing any type of uh, cryptographic uh, information, for example, public keys or uh, fingerprints of uh, keys, certificates, and so on. So uh, DNSSEC enabled uh, applications can use uh, or can take uh, advantage of uh, already existing special records to to do some kind of like uh, extensive validation and use such a records. For example, SSH clients can use SSH fingerprint record to validate uh, the host uh, key fingerprint uh, based on information from DNS. There are uh, records for public keys, TLSA records, and uh, records for IPsec. So I'll explain like uh, how, how this uh, how application, for example, SSH client can benefit from using DNSSEC. Uh, I'm sure that almost every one of you know this question when you connect to some host for the first time. The server will uh, like send to you its uh, fingerprint of, of its uh, public key, and you are asked if this fingerprint is really the one it should be. Who can answer such a question? Is here anyone that knows, like, what's the fingerprint of the server they are connecting to? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, but it's uh, extra work for you. Not that much, but you have to copy it, like check it. Everything. Oh, yeah. But for the first time. Yeah, but for the first time when you never connected to this server and you don't have the fingerprint, like you have to do it for the first time. So this is where uh, the. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, so well, we will get to that in the second part of presentation. Yeah. Uh, so SSH client, uh, that's DNSSEC enabled, uh, can do the validation for you automatically. You can just use option verify host key DNS uh, and set it to yes, and the client will automatically get the uh, necessary data from DNS server for the host you are connecting to, and will do the validation. If the fingerprint doesn't match the fingerprint in DNS, it will, uh, based on this option when it's set to yes, it will not connect to that client. Or uh, if the like DNS uh, sign is uh, not valid, it will tell you that there is possibly some man in the middle attack. So what's the situation on client side? First, I'll cover some requirements that uh, we have on the client side solution. First, uh, you need some trusted uh, resolver that is able to do the DNSSEC validation. And the simplest way to achieve such a thing is to have locally running validator. Uh, then we have to consider that uh, workstations and clients uh, often work in dynamic environment where connections are going up and down and you are connecting to VPNs and stuff like that. We need to handle uh, DN split DNS configurations, for example, with uh, VPNs. And we need to provide some like, backup solution if uh, you get some servers from DHCP and they are not DNS capable or are not able to provide you data you need to do the validation. We need to have some uh, fallback solution. Also, we need to do the hotspot detection. For example, when you go to some cafe and connect to Wi-Fi hotspot, uh, we need to, uh, and you need to uh, sign on using some captive portal. We need to detect such a situation and like, solve it properly. So what's the situation in Fedora? Maybe you remember Fedora 17 uh, feature 
DNS second workstations? Well, it was in some shape, but by my opinion, it was not in really good shape. What we have been doing uh, for the last few months, uh, we have been trying to improve the user experience of this solution. We'll be we, we have been improving it. Uh, for example, we added uh, uh, support for uh, split DNS uh, configuration, so we, we can handle now uh, VPN connections and so on. Uh, as a validating resol resolver, we use Unbound locally running, and we need to do the dynamic reconfiguration of Unbound, and for this purpose, we, we use DNSSEC trigger daemon. Uh, we get all the data uh, we need from uh, Network Manager using its uh, Python bindings. We also introduced a new configuration file, dnssec.conf, so the user is able to uh, specify the behavior regarding forward zone configurations. So th this picture illustrates uh, the architecture we have right now. So there's locally running unbound server. We have a DNSSEC trigger daemon that is doing uh, dynamic reconfiguration. And there's DNSSEC trigger uh, network manager dispatcher script that is uh, run every time by network uh, manager dispatcher on every change uh, in, uh, con of, on some connection. And we get all the necessary data from network manager. What uh, the script does, it uh, first uh, tries to find out uh, what are the default, default connections and uh, use those connections DNS servers and uh, pass them to the uh, daemon. Uh, those servers should be used as uh, global uh, forward uh, servers, but the DNS trigger daemon uh, does uh, ch checking uh, on those servers. It, uh, tries to find out if they are able to provide uh, necessary data to do the DNSSEC validation. If not, it will look into its uh, configuration with uh, fallback servers. It will try to contact those servers. And if they are not uh, reachable, it will tell Unbound to uh, only the final uh, decision. And in case the HTTP provided servers are not DNSSEC uh, capable, uh, fallback servers are not reachable, it will tell Unbound to use uh, root servers for validation. Everything is almost is also caching servers, so uh, it's caching every data, so the, the resolution is, uh, resolving is uh, pretty fast. Uh, DNSSEC trigger also does the split DNS configuration handling. It uh, configures Unbound with forward zone for every domain provided by some connection. We do this automatically for any type of connection except Wi-Fi connections. And, but you can like, uh, specify the behavior in dnssec.conf uh, configuration file. So what are the known issues and limitations of uh, current solution? First of all, the forward zone so DNSSEC validation can be handled or can be set only globally. So, Right now, we, we provide only one option to turn off and turn on the DNS validation for forward zones uh, globally. So no, you, you are not able to so configure it per connection right now. Uh, and with the latest version, you may see some ABRT notifications. It's not because our problems, but we are using like uh, network manager bindings that are not uh, fully tested, I would say. And we are, like, we found a lot of bugs and we found some more, but Network Manager guys are working really hard on fixing them soon, so hope, hope they'll do it. So what's the future? We feel like the current situation is uh, not what we want to, or what we would like to use in the future. We feel like uh, the DNS trigger daemon is uh, pretty redundant, and we already have Network Manager as a daemon running on the system. So why not to let Network Manager do all the stuff and reconfigure Unbound directly? So we would like to write and introduce 
uh, DNS plugin for Network Manager for Unbound that would do the uh, logic and stuff that uh, DNS sec trigger is doing. So we would like to implement the functionality in, into this uh, plugin, <coughs> the improved hotspot detection, servers probing, and some fallback solution. Or also uh, integrating with Network Manager, will, we think it will <coughs> enable us to provide uh, better configuration options and to be able to configure DNSSEC uh, validation per connection and stuff like that. So this is how we <coughs> uh, think the future solution should look like. There should be only network manager running that will handle resolve conf uh, content. Uh, it will somehow reuse or we will somehow merge the existing configuration used by uh, DNSSEC trigger and DNSSEC trigger script with network manager configuration. So we'll be able uh, to build the same solution using this future, so this future architecture and the current architecture. And there will be a DNS uh, unbound, uh, unbound plugin for, for Network Manager that will uh, implement the functionality that this uh, DNS trigger daemon doing and the hook. And it will reconfigure unbound dynamically. Well, uh, to be honest, there's no plugin right now, and we would like to do it as soon as possible, but uh, I hope end of this year, at, at least, with some like, uh, working prototype of the plugin. So, so uh, the schedule is not clear yet, but... Uh, it is agreed that uh, there will be people that will have dedicated time to implement such a thing, so. So uh, I'll, I'm giving the floor to Peter as he will continue with uh, the server side. Thank you, Tomáš. For those who are late, I'm Peter Špaček. I'm responsible for DNS in FreeIPA project. And I will start with a question. Who knows what VIP is? Please raise your hand. Okay, it's not that much. <laughs> so, what do you think? What's your best guess? What it could be? It's free and IPA. Maybe it's IPA for free. Sounds like that, right? So, something like, I don't know. <laughs> but no, it's not a beer. Free IPA is server. It's server for central identity management. It allows you to manage all user accounts and identities of machines and services from one place, from one user interface. And optional part of FreeIPA project is DNS integration and DNS management. That's what I'm working on. But the question is how it's identity management related to, to DNSSEC. It's a different thing, yeah? but not really. You can imagine many in the middle attack as for example, attempt to steal the identity of a machine. So the attacker pretends that he is somebody else or something else. So it really is related. Uh, in fact, DNSSEC allows you to verify identity of the machine you are connecting to. So you can be sure that the identity is the right one, nobody tampered with the connection, and you're really connecting to the right server. Well, how it works? It's just DNS, just data entry, right? Uh, but I would like to repeat what Tomáš already said. DNS is generic database, generic distributed database. It's not only about IP addresses and names. It's much broader thing. You can use it for whatever you want. Tomáš was talking about SSH keys in DNS3. You can also store TLS certificates in DNS3, IPsec keys, whatever. Uh, in this case, you can see TLS A here. The example on the slide is from real world. It's not, you know, makeup for this presentation. Fedora project.org website has published 
TLS certificate in the DNS and it's secured with DNSSEC. This record is a signature. So any DNSSEC ever client can download this, this hash, uh, verify the signature, and then the client can match the certificate presented by the site with the data from DNS. So no attempt to steal the identity of federalproject.org will succeed because the client is absolutely sure that the right hash is here. So there is no point of accepting different certificate. And it's nonsense to ask user, do you want to trust this certificate? No. The machine knows the information, so it can decide on its own, and it no, doesn't need any interaction with user. Yes? Well, of course. Uh, if you want to use this, your application has to be aware of the NSEC. I will get to it in a minute. Uh, I have shown you the basic f stuff in the NSEC. The question is why you need free IPA, right? If you want, you can do everything manually, but if you try that, you will find out that you have to generate a keys, at least two keys for each DNS zone, then sign the data in the DNS zone, then publish the hash of key in the parent zone. So if you are signing example.com, you have to publish the signature in .com domain. So it creates a chain of trust, as Tomáš was talking about it. And then you have to rotate keys. Recommendation is rotate keys every month. And of course, if you change something in a zone, you have to regenerate signatures <coughs> and, and so on. You can do that for one zone, but it's not pleasant. If you have more zones, it's even worse. It's actually uh, really painful. <laughs> that's the point where free IPA comes to the, you know, that's exactly the work for us because we are automating everything we can. And in our goal is to make DNSSEC deployment as easy as clicking to one button. So if you click to true and to update, so it's actually two clicks, not one. <laughs> but after those two <coughs> clicks, FreeIPA will generate signing keys for you, sign all the data, rotate keys as necessary, and if you make any change in the zone, it will be immediately signed, immediately visible by clients. That's our goal. We plan to deliver automatic key rotation and signing to Fedora 21, somewhere in this time frame. If you are interested, subscribe to FreeIPA interest list. You will get an email that we released our perfect FreeIPA server with DNSSEC support. But unfortunately, it's not enough to make all applications secure overnight. It will provide the infrastructure. It will ease the management on the server side. But we need your help. We need to make applications aware of DNSSEC. There are many possibilities. You can make TLS, SSH, IPsec, or even SMIME more secure if you add the support your application. And in fact, it will be even easier to configure for users because if this certificate is in DNS3, the user don't need to think about hash of the certificate, don't need to install CA certificate, and, and so on. And I think it answers your initial question. No? <laughs> Okay, we will get to it uh, in, during questions. So we really need patches to our applications. There are some options how to use it. There are many libraries for DNS. It depends on exactly what you want to do. OpenSSH is one example. They use ADFlag in glibc, so they will get the information that the record was signed, the information was validated, signature was correct, and so on. So SSH is one example. There are many other applications. We can talk about it later. Uh, to sum it up, the NSSEC is really important for security. Think about it. It's worth it. <laughs> it allows you to generally get any data from the DNS server to the NSSEC cl to the NS client in a secure way. So you can be sure that nobody tampered with the data along the way. It helps a little bit with non-DNSSEC ever applications, but 
you know, somebody can tamper with the TCP connection and so on. So it's much better if the application is DNSSEC aware. And we have the client side implementation in operating yeah. system. We are still kind of <coughs> uh, finding out what, how we sh it should be done on the client and what are the use cases we need to consider. So we would love to hear some more feedback from users. What is not working for you? And what, do you, what would you like us to implement or, or how we should be doing it for you to be easier? Using it daily so it works, but of course we could miss some. Yeah, but some without some use case. bugs or some feedback, we are not able to make it more pleasant, the user experience. Yeah. So if you want to make us happy, open your terminal, yeah. type in this command, install package, run the service. It don't need any configuration. It should just work. Yeah, and if it, not, if it doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> just file a bug file back. in Bugzilla. <laughs> okay, so now... We have time for questions. Yeah, we have. So, shoot. You said the uh, non cache the responses. Yeah. And it uses classical TTL values? Sure. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, it uses the TTL values from DNS. So, those uh, uh, cached records have, uh, uh, are like deleted after the time to live of this cached record expires. So, Uh, in this solution, uh, we we trust the unbound locally running unbound server. Yeah. It will like, fetch ev uh, the necessary data. It needs to do the validation, and it uh, builds the chain of trust by its own yeah, and I do the validation. Uh, if I can add something, it <coughs> tries to use the local DNS server if possible. The server you configured uh, initially in a resolve conf or get from DHCP, and if this server is not capable of DNSSEC if it strips some records or something like that. In, then in yeah. that case, it falls back to root servers. Yeah, but uh, I would but like only to... Only if it's not possible to I would use like, the local cache. I would like to stress that uh, uh, Unbound will not like, uh, trust a flag uh, from the DHCP provided uh, servers. It, will, it needs from those servers to be able to provide uh, DNSSEC keys uh, like uh, signatures of uh, records, so it does the validation every time by its own. It doesn't trust anyone, but it trusts anyone who, c who is able to provide DNSSEC data. Yeah, if they By are default, it will ask local server. Yeah. Okay. Well, usually uh, yeah. from the web browser does the DNS queries in parallel, so if you implement that, it's the same. Well, from yeah, that's the purpose of cache, right? Uh, from yeah. what I tested, uh, it's uh, pretty small. I don't have like exact percent how much more it takes, but uh, from what I tested for not DNSSEC uh, signed uh, domain, the response took like nine milliseconds and for DNSSEC uh, signed it took like 12. But uh, as I said, uh, the unbound does the caching, so you need to fetch all the keys only once when the, you are doing the first query and after that it reuses the cache data, so it's faster every time you do some <laughs> lookup. Yeah, yeah. For example, if uh, sorry, for example, if you go to example.com and then you go to website redhead.com, the all the keys for root and com yeah. are all already in cache, so it just validates the answer from example. But, but the, yes, yeah, so we are aware that it brings some overhead because you of get course. more data, it takes more time, and yeah. also that's the reason why, for example, DNS sec signed uh, like. Uh, zones and servers are used in amplification uh, attacks using DNS. So, okay. Right. 
right now uh, it uh, comes with the package, like uh, the root, uh, the key used by root servers is well known, and therefore is installed with the with the package, like DNSSEC, trigger and unbound. Also, if you install a bind server, it uh, has the key with it. There is like RFC for rotating the root uh, server key, but no one ever done it yet, so yeah. we'll First see. First rotation will happen next year. Next year, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> okay. Uh, if uh, the connection provided domain before and uh, the script uh, configured unbound with forward zone, if the connection goes down, uh, the forward uh, zone is removed from unbound and the uh, cache uh, for this subtree, uh, DNS subtree is uh, flushed. So, so you don't have uh, uh, data that you shouldn't be having in the cache. You can uh, go from VPN to public internet and back, and it yeah. will flush the cache, so you uh, will not see all data. And, and, and the same situation is for when you are when we are configuring, like the connection goes up, and we are configuring forward zone. We also uh, flush the cache for the subtree. Of course, but if you have 10,000 users, they are not sitting on the screen, you know, behind the screen and looking to the key, no, so... No, no, but it's about automation, yeah? Yeah, and of course. And with SSH client, I've got that. If I connect again and I, have to, uh, I need to do the rescue media or something like that, it will just say, oh, oh, something changed, yeah. That's automation, it's quite fine. Of course. You're doing the same, and I really respect it and really appreciate it, but you also got the problem why should I trust the root certificate? Yeah, that, that's course, the question. Because when I think about an attacker, and we've got some big attackers out there, you know, like the yeah. agencies and stuff like that, yeah? Of course. It would be quite easy for them because you got all the automation, and they just need to compromise the root certificate, and then they're in everywhere. Of and course. Yeah. yeah, you have also the option to replace this with your own key. If you don't trust anybody, uh, you want to have isolated network or trust only to, you know, something. Yeah, or you can... I, for example, I would trust CA with that. But uh, well, they probably uh, if you don't do something like that with, with DNS sec, for example, and at the browsers, we got the problem that not in the browsers, there are companies in which are insecure. Yeah. Uh -huh. they are Yeah, the point right is that the if not, not at what you are doing, but right at the <coughs> yeah, the point is that if your company, for example, don't trust to the let's say NSA <laughs> to the root key, then you can replace uh, use some special key for this, and the unbound validator is able to say for this subtree ignore the well-known root key, but use this specific one. Of course, you have to distribute yeah, the key somehow. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's just IP address. Well, you can do that only for subtree, yeah. if you want. Yeah. You can replace everything, the root key, or only so subtree. I, I well, you, you, you can if you don't trust the key, of course, if you don't trust yeah. the technology, of course. Not the technology, but uh, about the certificate. Why should I trust yeah, yeah. the root service? Uh, I think that you don't need probably to. control. You don't need, you don't need yeah, but I can only switch, switch the keys for, for the lower levels. 
No, if you want, you can switch even the root key if you want. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but you have to decide if uh, if you want to. De you have to decide if you trust or not trust. If you you said that you will not trust the root key, so there is no point of using you know reading the data from com yeah, domain. Yeah? You get my point. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. So if you don't trust the root, don't use it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's question for you. Mm, you. You mean you so don't? It is possible, but right now there is no automated solution. So you can, you would have to configure Unbound manually. But sure, there is no problem to tell Unbound that for this subtree, DNS subtree, just use this key and this is the ultimate key. And, and you can even remove the root key if you don't trust. Well, there Yeah. Yeah, we discussed this, uh, but the problem is that uh, this would uh, solve the, solu so, uh, the problem only when you are installing the client. But uh, the key should be rotated at some point, so we will have to come up with some solution that is able to like uh, rotate the key from some uh, for some sub tree uh, on the client uh, when it's running and when you are when you already or already, already installed it There was one. There's no possibility that they can somehow uh, change that. Is what do you mean really exactly? When, when I replace it, is it for all time? Was there some possibility that it will <coughs> yeah. be is there? <coughs> the technology supports also m multiple keys. So the root zone could use three keys and tell you which key was used for signing the data. So. Depends on only this one will be used and when it's not yes. there there's no function at all. It depends on implementation basically because it's not about the DNSSEC technology, it's the way how it's implemented in the resolver, it depends on unbound. It's yeah, not our business. It, yeah. Well I think that if you declare that this subtree uh, uses special key, it never can and never fall back. And if the key was not if, if the key was not used for signing the data, it will not validate so. If there should be some key used for the data, for the s signature, and it was not used, yeah. and you are not able to get the key, and it's not, it was not configured to be trusted, it will not pass. Okay. My best effort then is to use DNS sec, but for my own domains, which I really care about, there I replace it, and for the other domains, it's best effort because, yeah, sure. of course, yeah. they, can, they can trick me yeah. anyway. 
Yeah. We had one more question. No. They can have. They could. They could publish like a red one and red two keys. So two keys, and if one was compromised, uh, they can have all the data signed by both keys, and they will will just stop trusting the key. But uh, so revocation within the key in the parent domain. So if yeah. they compromise, example, com in the dot com domain, you say this key is not trusted anymore. And so, so you can get the information from DNS and. Not to not trust a uh, key with this fingerprint. So that would be kind of I mean, yeah. yeah. It, it depends on the t TTL and TTL values. So. We are yeah. out of time, so yeah. we can discuss it now in person. Thank you. focus on the use case when we have an isolated domain that is yeah. disconnected and making sure that we have the key distribution and notification about the key rotation yeah, right through definitely. SSSD. So we need to open specific tickets uh, just to, yeah, to track that. I plan to that. I still wasn't able to manage all the paperwork because from the week of meetings, yeah, I yeah, have yeah, I, I know. tons of notes, and I will convert that to tickets. And yeah, okay, great. I'm uh, definitely open at tickets and so on. There was one more thing.